In this video we're going to look over how to find the optimal rotation age for an even aged forest again. First we'll model how the volume of timber grows with time. This bottom axis will be time, t, in years. We're calling this years, but it doesn't matter if it's years or months or whatever. The line should look about the same. We'll call this q of t. We're not going to set up the actual equation for this, but what are some things that might affect the growth pattern of the tree? Well, it would depend on the properties of the soil, the kind of tree, climate, like the amount of rainfall or the latitude, elevation, temperature. And if this is a predictive equation, we'll probably want to factor in the risk of insects, fire, disease, and probably some other stuff. Anyways, we want to be working with the value of the timber, the value of the stumpage. It's going to be steeper because the value increases as the diameter of the tree gets wider. So it should look something like this. This will be S, the stumpage, and it's going to depend on the year, T. The stumpage should simply be the quantity of wood at that year multiplied by the price of wood. We're assuming the price of wood is only going to be based on the diameter of the logs and isn't affected by supply and demand or anything else for now. Okay, moving on, let's use this information to make the incremental and average value graphs. We have time t for the x-axis, and this is the age of the forest. We should call this other one h2. So this is the average or incremental growth in stumpage. It's usually given as dollars per hectare or acre per year. Let's first just draw them qualitatively. We know the incremental growth is going to start here, where the growth starts. It's going to peak somewhere in here in the middle and end when the stumpage stops up here. So it'll start here, peak here. Doesn't really matter how high since we don't have any units for the axis. And it stops here. Now let's see if I can draw this. Yeah, it's perfect. Average growth is the stumpage divided by the time. So we're doing the slope of a line from the origin to points along the graph. And we know it's going to peak here when the slope is highest. So for the orange incremental line that we just did, we were basically plotting the change from year to year, this distance here. A more accurate way to look at it is we are plotting the tangents along this curve. But at the maximum sustainable revenue, where we would be setting our optimal rotation age if we were just looking at revenue, the slope of the tangent there will be the same as the slope of the average line. So knowing that, we know that the average growth and the incremental growth are going to cross at the maximum sustainable revenue point, at the point where average growth is highest. So here, the average line is going to start where the stumpage starts and peak at the maximum sustainable revenue. And then it's just going to sort of decrease forever, but never really get back to zero. So like this. Eh, we're close enough. The incremental line represents the growth that happens in each year. So we can model this line as the stumpage value one year from time t minus the stumpage value at time t. This will give the change in the stumpage value at any given year t. The average growth is the stumpage value divided by the year. So s of, whoops, s of t divided by t. Okay, so if we were just considering maximizing revenue, this would be fine. But we need to include some costs. Let's look at the opportunity cost. The forest can grow quickly, but the growth does slow down over time. So it's going to be worthwhile to sell the stumpage, just have it chopped down, and invest that money somewhere else and replant the forest. What we looked at in the previous video, we're dividing the new stumpage value by the total stumpage value to determine by what percent the forest is going to grow this year. It's not going to start until the stumpage value starts increasing, and it will be zero once the growth stops just eyeballing it this time, it will look something like this. So this is the percent by which the value of the forest is growing each year. We can compare this to an interest rate, let's say this line is the interest rate. As the interest rate increases, the optimal rotation age becomes sooner. This is sort of like the other things that we can invest in right now are so much more profitable than forestry that we're better off just cutting down the forest early and taking that money and investing it in those other things. If the interest rate was relatively lower, then the rate at which the forest grows by would be more desirable, and we benefit by investing in forestry. So this is a bit of a weird relationship because it's not a real cost. This is an opportunity cost. We never have to pay it. It's just a decision-making tool to decide what we should be doing to maximize the amount of money we're making, given all of our options. This relationship, finding where the percent increase in stumpage value no longer grows faster than the interest rate, is the exact same thing as discounting. For our discounting equation, we'll do v for value at 
time zero. If you're unfamiliar with discounting, check out our other video on that topic, link in the description. So what this means is that we could go through and calculate the present value of the stumpage each year and find out where it is maximized, and it would give us the year that we should set our optimal rotation age to. So let's try that. Let's make a graph that represents the present values. It would be zero in the beginning again, since there's no stumpage here, and then increase as the forest grows quickly, but decrease as the years of interest compound. It would look something like this. I didn't really base this off anything, so it's not gonna line up with our other graphs, but whatever. Then what do we wanna do? We always wanna try to maximize the present value. So this point here would correspond on this other graph as if the interest rate was here. But we can also prove this, if you like mathematical proofs, by taking the discounting equation and actually turning it into our rotation age criteria. The slope of the tangent where the present value is highest equals zero. So to find this point, we want to find where the change in the present value equals zero. So this is the stumpage value one year from time t, and we want its present value. And if we minus the present value of the stumpage at time t, this gives us the change that's going to happen in the present value this year. Okay, this is just delta v. It's an equation for the tangents along the present value curve. When this equals zero is when our optimal rotation age will be. So let's sort of play around with this. Let's first move this over. If we multiply each side by one plus the interest rate to the power of the year t, we can cross some things out. This crosses out, and on this side we're left with just one plus the interest rate to the power of one. Multiply both sides by one plus the interest rate. This crosses out, and we get this. Expand this bracket out. Now if we subtract the sumpage value from both sides, what do we get? Well, the stumpage value one year from time t minus the stumpage value at time t is just the incremental growth. So this becomes delta s. This crosses out. We'll divide both sides by the stumpage value, and this crosses out, and there. We've just got this relationship. It was our exact same criteria for getting the optimal rotation age before. So whether we discount every year and find the highest net present value, or compare the growth rates of the costs and the benefits, they're both ways of accounting for the opportunity cost. Okay, let's look at it again in a different way. Instead of comparing the growth in terms of percent like we've been doing, we can put the actual values of the incremental costs and benefits on the graph. It's kind of like what we did back in a fisheries video when trying to find out how much fishing effort the fishermen would put in, we were looking for when marginal costs and marginal benefits were equal. So we'll use the incremental stumpage growth as the revenue, Oh, this should have started a little later like we did with all the other graphs. Too late, I'm not changing it. The incremental cost is just the opportunity cost of letting the forest grow for another year at any given point. It's the stumpage value multiplied by the interest rate. So it would look something like this. This is the incremental stumpage growth, and this is the opportunity cost each year. This is the amount of interest that could be earned in a year if the forest was chopped down. Where they meet will correspond to the optimal rotation age. If we kept going, our revenue is still increasing, but the costs are starting to increase by more. We're sitting on so much forest that it's more worthwhile to cut it down and invest that money than to let the forest keep growing. Back here, it's the opposite situation. The forest is growing in value by more than the money we could earn from interest. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at a few other costs and see what happens to the optimal rotation age when we start playing around with these factors.